Welcome, viewers, and thank you for joining us. I'm Braulio Rosa, Executive Director of the Broward County Bar Association. It is my great honor and privilege to have a dear friend, Judge Ken Gillespie, here with me today. We are going to be discussing a few things about him to get to know him in celebration of Black History Month. It's a great program that we put together, the Broward County Bar Association, in conjunction with the 17th Judicial Circuit. Judge Gillespie, welcome. Um, thank you, Braulio. Happy to be here. Wonderful. So let's get right into it because I know you got some good stuff to tell us about, Your Honor. Uh, so let's start with the easy stuff. When when did you first join the bench? Were you appointed, elected, and what was that process like? Um, um, I was appointed um, to the circuit bench, and in, and in, in, I was a, I was appointed in two thousand eight. I was sworn in on January twentieth of um, two thousand nine. Um, I went through the Judicial Nominating Committee and was fortunate enough to be, um, be um, one of six to go to the governor's office and subsequently was appointed um, by the governor um, to the circuit court bench. Wonderful. And can you tell us what division you currently serve in? I currently serve in the probate division. I've served in that capacity since January of 2018. Great. And I know a little bit about your family background. So I'd like for you to tell tell our audience about uh, you know where you're from, and what was your upbringing like. Um, um, my my mother is from Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, my father is from Aberdeen, Mississippi. Um, they migrated to um, the state of Florida back in the '60s. Um, they were migrant workers. Um, if, if you can recall, back in the '60s, um, Florida was a was a citrus an industry. They migrated um, in the 1960s and remained there. I'm one of eight. Um, um, my upbringing was was a, was was very um, had a very happy upbringing. I got to tell you, it was you know you're the parents of a, a, a you know of a of a stern family. Um, um, again, one of eight. Um, you had to have some um, you had to have some discipline and follow the the the, the, the rules, um, so to speak. But in terms of um, just looking back on on my at my at my childhood, I mean, um, I can remember back at the age of six years old, um, uh, you know, being being a, alongside my parents because they were migrant workers. Um, my childhood really broadly consisted of um, um, in the citrus in the citrus groves of um, um, Central Florida. I mean, my summers consisted of picking watermelons. Um, my after school and and um, and vacation days. I mean, vacation. Um, out of school vacation days consisted of working alongside our parents, and I can recall that 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 was probably from the age of six to about fifteen. Um, back in the eighties, um, of South of Central Florida experience at that time, um, a freeze, and it kind of shifted what my parents did in terms of migrant workers. Um, they shifted to um, to the fishery um, industry to some to some respect. Um, I um, took a job at the local department store. Um, I worked throughout high school and 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 throughout college. So that was that was that was our upbringing. So you've been basically working since you were a little kid. Since since I was a little um, since I was about six, as I recall, about six years old. Correct. Off script, but how do you think how do you think that impacted you and in, and in, in your drive to to get to where you are today? You're very successful. So, you know, to be honest with you, it, it's, it's, you know, um, my, my siblings and I, we often talk about how um, tough my parents were. Um, and, and we talk among ourselves about our parents, as a matter of fact. And, 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 and you know, and, and I have to give them some credit because, um, you know, fast forward 30 years later, you look back at you and you say, you know, your parent, your parent, your parents' parent styles at that time, you didn't understand. But now I understand them. Um, it was but for. Um, going through what I went through um, a, a, as a child, hard work. Um, my 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 father didn't take any, didn't have, didn't didn't expect any excuses, didn't want to hear any excuses, and I and it was that experience going through um, working hard um, that 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 really opened the door to other to other possibilities for me because um, that was something that I didn't want to do for the rest of my life. Um, I, I got to tell you, so his pairing skills back then was that. If you if you if you don't value education, this is where you will be. If you value education, perhaps you want to pursue education. So um, so it, I think it, it acted as a springboard for, for me to put education first. And 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 I'm so grateful for that. So transitioning over to uh, 
cultural diversity, Your Honor. Tell us a little bit about your thoughts. Is, is it important to have cultural diversity on the bench? Um, I think cultural diversity is very important. Um, um, think about it for a minute. Um, Jess is it supposed to be blind. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's what we strive for in the legal profession. Um, we know that justice oftentimes is not blind. Um, the reality is that, that justice um, has many factors that influence um, outcomes, and, and we know that. Um, but diversity is important for a number of reasons. For, for example, um, a diverse bench leads to increased um, public confidence. Um, it leads to public trust. And you have the appearance of at least fairness, fairness. Um, um, that I think invariably leads to a more um, uh, accessible, accessible ju um, judicial system um, for those who might think that the system is not fair. So diversity is very important. Um, but, but let me say this broadly on the diversity point. Um, while we should strive for diversity, it should not be at the exclusion of having an independent, impartial, and competent judiciary at the same time. Totally agreed. And... Uh... So tell me a little bit about what you did before you were judge, what kind of law you practice. Um, um, I started my legal career as a prosecutor, um, I three years here in Broward. And from there, I, um, a, a total transition to the civil side. Um, I was, um, I was um, hired on as a senior trial attorney with the um, United States Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, um, litigating employment discrimination cases on all fronts. Um, I did that for five years. Um, litigated all over the state of Florida. Um, it came to a point that I, we, my wife and I started to have children and I didn't want to be all over the state of Florida. Um, I had an opportunity to apply for a magistrate position here in Broward County, was successful in, in obtaining that position and did that for five years. And that was a natural progression from magistrate into um, a, the circuit court um, um, judge position. Well, you just stole my thunder. I was going to ask you what motivated you to go from. Well, that's, that's, that's exactly what happened. So I, I like to say that my, my, my 21 year old daughter um, was a result of me um, I'm really sh shifting gears in terms of my legal profession. Um, you know, I, I love litigation. I, I'm, I, I mean, I litigated um, in all the districts of Florida. I really enjoyed the litigation aspect. But um, when she was born, um, it, it was taking me away too much, and I wanted something more local. And, um, and it led me to the magistrate position. And eventually, um, I was lucky enough to be appointed by the governor. Talking about being a judge, <laughs> tell me what sort of qualities you think benefit a judge the most discernibility that comes to mind, discernibility, um, preparedness is, is another quality, um, being able to multitask, um, judicial intuition. I know that throws you, but judicial intuition, um, um, knowing, um, knowing, knowing when, when to act uh, and, 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 and how to act um, in terms of in terms of, of your, of, of your dis, of, of decision making, so to speak, that judicial intuition is very important and it comes with experience. I can tell you that the judge that I am now, um, I'm a much better judge, Braulio, than I was 13 years ago. And, and you kind of develop that judicial intuition. But at the forefront of all of that, I think that um, the, the core to uh, the, the, the core quality of a judge should be that discernibility. And, 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 and again, being able that judicial intuition it comes along with that is management. I mean, we 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 operate. I mean, we have to do so many different things um, that 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 the public don't see as judges. I mean, there's much more than just um, taking the bench and, and and making rulings. I mean, it's a 24-hour job. I mean, you have to manage um, not only your, your your the professional side of being a judge, but you also have to manage, um, you know, the outside activities and community event at, at community activities as well and managing all that. So management will be also be a, a good quality that a judge should have. And I know locally as a judge, uh, you know, the good ones are, are engaged in the community. And, uh, and so it is 24 seven. Yeah. Well, um, all of the judges you're interviewing are good judges. <laughs> yeah, we, we for the for the most part, we have 
we have a great bench here at the 17th and, and, Judicial. And, and, and most and, and most of us, um, when we're out in the community, we we cross paths. So I mean, it's it's pretty it's pretty active here in Broward. Yeah, definitely. I'm I'm very pleased. We you all always uh, are involved at the bar, engaged uh, with membership and the lawyers and in giving, and so we're grateful for that. Thank you, Your Honor. So from uh from from the hard questions i guess the substantive stuff let's let's have some fun now let's have a couple questions because this went a little faster than i thought i know we could go really deep but um so tell me growing up you said 80s right uh, we're about we're about I, the same age well, I, right yeah we're, we're, we're i think we are the same age um right you know i was born you know you know when i was born yeah I'm yeah like, we're, we're 80s kids we're, we're, we're 80s kids. 80 kids 70s late 70s <laughs> So, uh, you know, I, I know I grew up, uh, I mean, I had an eclectic taste, but that was the time of, you know, R&B, new wave, uh, punk rock, hard rock, uh, you name it. It was a different time. Uh, so yeah. what kind of music do you tell? Tell me about one of your favorite bands or groups. Uh, uh, you know, Brawley, that's a tough question because um, I, I love music. I mean, uh, music takes you back in time. Um, it really does. I mean, that's a tough question for me. You know, I'm going to cite Maya Angelou. Um, we need to be you, you, we need to be a rainbow in someone else in someone else's life. We need to dance each other dances, eat each other dishes. Uh, and, 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 and so I, I subscribe to that. But in terms of, of music, I like it all, believe it or not. I mean, where, 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 where do you want me to start? Um, I am a 70s and 80s type guy. Um, Stevie Wonder, for example, Superstition. Um, Marvin Gaye, Let's Get It On. James Brown, I Feel Good. Um, you know, um, the Isley Brothers, for example, that lady. Does that ring a bell to you? Um, yes. Those, those those, um, even, right. even, even Paul McCartney um, with My Love, um, Earth, Wind and Fire, um, Teddy Pendergrass. I'm taking you back, way back. Well, I'd Teddy love earth wind and fire that earth, was one of the fire. bands um, that was really good if, if you've never gotten if you've never gotten to one of the concerts I, I i suggest that you do that um but um um luther vandross for an example you know um think about that for a second and, and you know luther vandross luther 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 I mean, he's, but, but he's one on, of the best hold, hold on for a minute we grew up at a time Braulio, um that one of my favorite co uh, country artists um kenny rogers kenny Again, rogers that's how, recently I've, passed yeah, yeah. Kenny Rogers, the gambler, Dolly Parton back there, nine to five. I mean, I'm, but, yeah. but, but if, if it's not, if it's not, um, Motown, um, um, I, I you know, I like jazz, um, the Miles, Miles Davis, um, mm -hmm. um, um, Duke Ellington, for an example, Paul Hardcastle, Kim Waters, right. um, um, Boney James, that type of music. Um, That's good music. It's, it's all good music, but yeah. then again, if you want to switch gears and you want to go to gospel, I mean, let's talk about gospel for a minute. You now, know, I have no foundation there, so. Well, I'm going to, yeah, go. I'm gonna, I'll suggest some um, for you. you <laughs> okay. Got, got C.C. Winans, for example, Yolanda Adams, you'll love Yolanda Adams. You got Kirk um, Franklin, you got Donnie McKirkland, Marvin Sapp, and the list just goes on and on. And just to inject some levity, just to show you, sometimes judges are hip. I'm going to throw in even DMX. Um, DMX, because okay. sometimes, Braulio, I feel <laughs> like I'm about to lose my mind <laughs> up in here, up in here. Just All object, right. Just to object a little levity. I love it. I love, I love it. I love, I love, I love an array of music. I, I thought you were going to like old school rap, you know, like Run DMC or but something. I can go, like I that. can go, I can, I can, well, we can go back there. We can go, Ron, Ron DMC is a, is a great artist. He, um, you know, um, you know. Um, for example, um, I, I, I'm not going to do it on this video. Right. <laughs> we, 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 that was, that was, our, that was um, uh, I'm doing the 70s, I mean, late 80s, um, late 80s. When really that was, was Run DMC was that rap group that kind of, because of Aerosmith, they crossed over. If you remember, MTV at the time really wasn't playing, quote unquote, you know, music was different then. So you had like the black music stations, you had the white music stations. And back then, MTV initially was not playing black artists no, and I, that was that was one of the groups that helped transition music to yeah, yeah, you, everyone you, but when they were not playing it but you had Soul Train picking all of that up though that's true yeah Soul Train picking all of it up so we could talk about this for days and days uh, we could go into this <laughs> but, but this is a, is a levity but when I was a youngster I mean we used to rap to you know we used to memorize the 
the, 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 the some of the some of the uh, I guess the the rhymes that they had some some, right. of the, some of the music I could and I probably could probably do some of that for you if you really <laughs> no 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 that's not 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 have me to do that um no your honor no 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 please but but I remember I mean one of my favorites when we were kids you and I grew up in California and you'd go to Westwood that was the cool place to go cruise around and one of the big songs then was uh, White Lines. Grandmaster Flash. Yeah, of course. Right. Yeah, of course. Very familiar. Yeah. I'm gonna give you a story. I'll give you a, I'll give you a story. Um, one of the one of the artists who worked for one of the artists who was very instrumental with him um appeared in front of me in a dependency case. Wow. Um, in a dependency <laughs> case. And he wanted to come up and he wanted me he, and he wanted me to know that. And 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 I didn't believe him. And I said, Well, let, let me hear some of the music on cue. He was able to he was able to start rapping. And everybody started clapping for this guy. So be careful what you ask for. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, uh, I will. I think we've covered some great ground, Your Honor. I think you and I could go on and talk for hours. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll have to uh, maybe I'm going to have to do a, a, some kind of podcast and we could just do that. And then people that are interested could jump on and, and listen to us talk about music from the day. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we'll call it we'll call it um, um, Judge Gillespie Braulio um a motown review i'm in i'm so in <laughs> anyhow uh judge ken gillespie i want to thank well, you for for you, you talked about you 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 asked me very earlier um, and the right before we got on about role models and different mm -hmm. things like that um, yes in, in, in just to jar your memory and and i and and i told you let me think about it i mean we can cover it now we can cover it or cover no it. no yeah i mean look this is important yeah. i mean who a person who kind of gives you some kind of foundation, hope and goals, aspiration, that person impacts who you're going to be. So yes, please tell us about who is probably one of your greatest role models. Yeah. You know, Bralio, when you broached that question early, I mean, earlier before we went on, I, I, I thought about it in terms of who was an influence in my life. And, and, it, and it takes me back to, um, to my father, I think, as a, as a role model. I wish I could sit here and tell you that as some legal scholar, but it, but I, for me, it's my father. But in terms of a role model, if you can take half of my father and half of me, um, that 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 would be my role model. Let me let me tell you what I mean by that. My father was a very common man. I mean, very common. Didn't speak many words, um, but when he did when he did speak, he meant it. Um, you know, and again, I talked about his parenting style. Whatever we did in life. It, 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 it appeared that it was never enough. I mean, it's like he expected it and more. And we talk about that today, my, my siblings and I, about the childhood that we were subjected to. It, it wasn't a lot of hugs, it wasn't a lot of kisses. It was more about, this is what I expect you to do. And when you talk about impact and role models, and, and, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I and I wanna put, I wanna include myself in that conversation. If I were to look at a role model, it would be me. Um, the role model will be me. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Um, you know, he, my father never allowed us to think that we were more than what we were. You always had something to perfect or something to improve. So if you had asked me this question five years ago, I would tell you that my role model was me five, 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 five years from that point. It would be, it would be five years from that point. And, and when I reached that point, at, at that five-year point, you say, who's your role model? I probably would tell you is me in five years. In other words, I'm always having something to, to reach for, something to try to perfect. And, and, is, and that's the way I look at it. It's an unorthodox um, type um, 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 response, but for me, it works. I mean, it's me. Every five years, or I'm looking at how I can perfect myself. And it, and it relates back to my dad. And, and, and you know, whether you agree or disagree, it, it works for me. It, it, it keeps me grounded. It always keeps me reaching for something, and 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 if you can always reach for something, if you can always strive for perfection, I think I think that's um, your par for the course. I can actually get it. I mean, there's you know I'm not going to get into my own personal, but there's different people that I've looked to, but in the end, you know, it's you're an individual, right? So you're you're trying to better yourself and become a better person in this planet. At least that's my goal, and I'm I'm I'm. I think that we're kind of on the same page. You want to be a, a good human being on this planet. 
doing good things. And, and, and then again, on a personal note, we have daughters and um, we have daughters and, and been a role model for them. And, and, you know, and I couldn't think of a better role model than, than working on and working on myself and looking at myself yeah. as a possible role model and trying to perfect and trying to perfect me. Um, you know, on, again, on orthodox response, but, um, but, it, but it works for me. Uh, unorthodox, but, uh, you know, it's the, it's the, the great thinkers that think out of the box, your honor. <laughs> you got it. Uh, I did want to tell you judge, uh, and, and, you know, I've said it here. Everyone knows we're friends. Uh, you are a great, uh, great person, a great servant to the people of Broward County. Most people out there don't know Ken Gillespie, judge Ken Gillespie, because they don't have reason to be in a courtroom but if anyone's watching or listening you should know that this man is is a dedicated servant committed uh and just thought only thinking about the community and um uh was just a great man i know i keep repeating that but i could tell you from mm -hmm. the relationship and the things that that we've worked on together so thank you your honor for for everything you do in our community and Braulio, thank you, and I appreciate those words. Um, I want to know if we can somehow transcribe what you just said and forward them to my wife. Um, <laughs> and forward them to my wife. Um, so if you can do that for me at the conclusion of this video, that would be much appreciated. And should I say, so ordered. <laughs> okay. You got it, Your Honor. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Judge. Take care.